Well, we're looking at how God loves us and how we love each other. One goal that we have is to communicate love more effectively, specifically communicate God's love. Today, let's talk about loving with our words. This hits home because most of us know how important words are. We use words and have been shaped by words as well. Do you remember that saying? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never, what? Hurt me. That may be the biggest lie ever spoken to kids. Words hurt. A broken bone, that heals. But oftentimes the wounds from painful words, and they hurt for a long, long time. In fact, I wish I could erase some hateful words from over the years. Some spoken or written to me, others that I've spoken, that I've written. I've said I'm sorry, I know that forgiveness has been granted, but oftentimes, man, there's a scar that's left behind because I wounded somebody. Solomon, the wisest man in Proverbs 12, he says in verse 18, reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So when it comes to your words, do you find yourself on the demolition team or are you on the construction crew? Let's speak words that communicate love, that build others up. After my mom died, I understood even more importantly about words. This may seem strange as I use words all the time because I'm a preacher, right? But I understood the power of words in more of a family context. After my mom's death at 51, my dad had the funeral and we did it. And it was then that my dad told me how much he loved me. Now, you need to know, my dad and I, we loved each other. But as far as saying I love you, it just wasn't something we said a lot. But overnight it changed because of my mom's death. Because then it seemed like we understood the preciousness of life. We understood the importance of family. And really my son at a young age started it. Brett, he'd tell grandpa that he loved him and he wouldn't leave until he heard it back from grandpa. Grandpa finally got it. And what's strange is we never talked about it. We just started doing it. My mom's death motivated us to deepen the use of encouraging words. And I'm asking you to use some encouraging words, especially in front of others. Jesus certainly did that. Listen to some of Christ's encouraging words. Jesus said, woman, you have great faith. Well done, good and faithful servant. Today, you will be with me in paradise. This poor widow has put in more than all the others. Neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. Your brother will rise again. Today, salvation has come to this house. I've not found anyone else in all of Israel with such great faith. You can probably recall people who know, who you know love you by the way that they've encouraged you with their words. My father-in-law, Eldon, is certainly one who's been an encouraging person in my life with his words. Rosalind Turner, Kathy Brown, wow. They have helped me so much with their encouraging words. You and I can have positive, a very positive life transforming effect when you emulate, emulate Jesus style of love, specifically in the words we use. So look for opportunities to encourage others, especially in front of others. Because again, when you tell everyone in the dinner party that you admire your husband's work ethic and he's sitting right next to you, I'm telling you, that means more than his boss could ever say. When you take pictures of your daughter and her friends and you tell her, man, you're the most beautiful girl that I've ever seen. That means more to her than if you tell her the same thing in private. Some of you are coaches and when you've got the whole team together after the game and you praise a player for a good play, I'm telling you, that means more than if you relay it to them through their parents. When in a meeting and you tell your boss, you're the greatest person in the world, well, then you're just kissing up, all right? Just to be honest, all right? But it sounds good anyway, I get it, right? Often, this is what I'm saying. When we encourage someone, when we compliment someone, we just sometimes do it superficial, right? You look nice today, I like those clothes. Or we compliment their work, hey, good job on that report. Now again, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying, let's go deeper. Rather than just complimenting the outside, let's speak loving words by telling them specifically what we appreciate about them and about who they are on the inside. This is a big topic and it's important, but now I'm out of time. So I'm gonna continue it next week. But this week, would you love on some people by encouraging them with your 